Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. I'm done for the day, I've cleaned up, and I thought, pour myself a bullet and talk to you guys about a couple things. Apologies to the teetotalers and guys in recovery out there, I'm not trying to tempt you. So you wanna buy a Bronco, yeah, okay. Been getting a lot of emails about that lately. Or a Scout, or a Jeep, or whatever it is that you wanna buy and restore, okay, guys. I don't want to be a naysayer. I don't want to crush people's dreams, but tread very, very lightly. It is no joke, all right? You guys saw me go through the Bronco ordeal and, quote, fail, right? I mean, I gave up because I wanted to focus on the Scout and I'd sort of lost my will to finish that Bronco. If I bought another Bronco, which I may, may do someday, um, I would do it differently. But mile three's got it, he's gonna finish it. You know, I wish him the best. I hope it is awesome. And then Frank's got my motor, that thing's running great. So, you know, positive energy out in the world from the Bronco project. But, you know, I sunk a lot of money into it and I did not recover the money I sank into it. The Scout, this thing has no rust and it's still gonna be a very expensive restoration. I would say 20? 15, 15, 20, probably. And uh, it's the same motor. I'm doing all the work myself. And I am not just wasting money on parts. So it is no joke. If you look at your bank account and there aren't commas in the number, at least one comma, and hopefully like more than one number in front of the comma, like you are not, this is not your world. <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, it's funny, I watch these shows, a lot of the same shows you guys watch, right? And and, and I make an okay living. Like, I'm, I'm okay, right? Uh, I, I am the only breadwinner in the family, but it's not what you make, it's what you spend, right? So we're careful. But these guys, you know, uh, on all these YouTube channels, it's like, where do they get the time and money to do all this work? Like, you see the pace I'm going, and I'm in here a lot. So don't let TV distort your reality. Right? Like this is, you don't, it's not an episode of whatever where they start and then 30 minutes later they're done, right? Those are often shot over many days, weeks. They're not showing the credit card purchases. They're not showing the hard times. Like it's literally edited to, edited to entertain you, okay? And then you guys get inspired to go out and buy something and then you got to get bogged down. And how many projects ends up buckets of parts, right? You see them on Craigslist all the time, project, project, project. Now with the Bronco, it's nice because those actually have a very decent return right now, right? The market's hot right now. But if gas prices goes up, stock market goes down, eventually the Broncos are gonna get played out. Now obviously you hardcore guys will always love them just like I'll always love my Scout. But you saw Mustangs and Camaros go and then like now they've leveled off, like they're not even interesting that much anymore, right? You see a Mustang in a car show, you're like, <sighs> the other things is the tools, you know, I, you need so much equipment, so much room, so many tools, right? Because you need to be able to do all this stuff if yourself. If you're not doing it yourself, you're spending 80 grand, $80,000. I'm not joking. Like you're going to spend five grand on your motor. You're going to spend at least five grand on your paint, probably another five to 10 on your body work, five to 10 on interior and small parts. Like it adds up quickly. Don't forget your gears, your transmission, your transfer case, all the rebuild kits for that or the rebuilding for that. I mean, it's like tires and wheels, bumpers are a thousand bucks a piece. Like it adds up crazy fast. So, you know, like you gotta do the work yourself unless you have a lot of money. And if you don't have a lot of money and you can't do the work yourself, you're not gonna finish your project. I will caveat this, right? If you're not interested in a restoration, if you just want to buy something and tool around, go for it. The one key to that, the one thing you should take away from this video is no rust. If it's got rust, walk away. And just because it doesn't look rusty doesn't mean it's not rusty. You got to get up in there, feel behind the quarter panels, run your hand along there, um, bring a, what do you call it, a paint thickness measure. Like you got to really inspect it. If you're seeing rust, there's a ton more where that came from. If there's a lot of rust, you're gonna get bogged down. And the thing is, they're just not that fun to drive because there'll be holes in them. I, real, I realize it's a matter of opinion, right? But it's 
you know, I love it. It's my hobby, but my wife is cool with it, Mrs. Matt's Garage. Uh, and even that I push to the limit sometimes. My kids are cool with it, and even that I push the limit so, sometimes. So I try to make sure to be present for them, go skateboarding, you go on date nights, like be around, go to seafair, whatever, like be a dad and be a husband. But like, I'm in here. It's Tuesday night. I'll be in here Wednesday night. I'll probably be in here Thursday night. Like I'm in here all the time and you see the pace I'm going at and I am not an inefficient person. So, and you're going to lose heart. You're going to go back and forth. Now with the scout, I'm driven. Like I'm going to finish this thing, but you know, it, it challenges me at times. So yeah, I, I realize it's kind of a meandering talk. Like I don't, I didn't start it with a script or a structure, but because I wanted it to come straight out, like exactly what I'm thinking about the subject. Um, I've had a lot of guys lately email me with pics of trucks they're thinking about buying. By the way, if you're one of those guys, like it's not just you, like five or six people in the last four weeks have contacted me and said, hey, I'm thinking about getting this, what do you think? Every one of them to the last man was like, you know more about cars than I do, like to me. <laughs> it's scary. Or I, I don't know much about working on cars. Like, you you better you better have either an inheritance or have made a lot of money in the stock market. Or like, if you're just Joe Schmo on a salary, it ain't gonna cut it. It's just not gonna happen. You gotta do the work yourself. And if you don't have the tools, and you don't have the shop, and you don't have the time, how are you gonna do it? The guy who bought my transmission um, adapter from the 350 to the 727. He's like, I don't have a welder. I was like, well, how are you gonna put, how are you gonna put the motor in? Like the, the 350 doesn't fit on the scout motor mounts. He's like, oh, I have a friend who welds. I'm like, okay, but like, it's not the only thing that needs to get done, right? Like, like there's brackets and the the radiator needs to be modified. Like it's there's a lot of work, and welding would be one of those really useful skills to have. He's like, I don't really have a garage, so I'm like, what, like. <laughs> Like, how can you even think about doing this work, right? But, hey, maybe I'm too cautious. I don't know. Could be. I'm pretty risk averse, you know. If you have the time, and by time I mean 30 to 40 hours a week. Okay, let's say 24 to 30 hours a week. The money. If you're doing it yourself, you need 30 to 50 grand plus tools and equipment. If you're paying someone else to do it, 80 grand. Got to have the money. The will. Is this what you want? Are you sure? Like This is something I tell people who call me, right? The Bronco is an American two-door convertible 4x4. The Scout, American convertible two-door 4x4. Does it sound like anything else? Jeep, same thing. American convertible two-door 4x4. So you buy a new Jeep Wrangler for way less than you're going to spend a rec... On, on a restoration. Like literally go to the Jeep dealership right now, fork over $40,000 and drive off with a two door Wrangler, a few bucks more, maybe even a Rubicon. You'll be able to trail all day, top comes off, everything works, you got modern conveniences, better gas mileage, more aftermarket support, awesome package off-road right out of the gate. So why are you gonna do this? Well, you're doing it to look cool, okay? I mean, Come on, like, are you are you so altruistic? You believe that, you know, it's your job to preserve American heritage. I mean, we have America's Car Museum right here in Seattle. It's awesome. You just go there, right? Like, you're doing this to be seen and looked and 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 to be cool. Is that is that like bad to say? I don't think so. Because if you're really like an off roader, you should get a buggy, right? Those are better off road than any car you could build. There's nothing wrong with that, but just be honest about it. And, and, and my point really is like, our Broncos, Broncos are cooler than Jeep CJs. But are CJs not cool? Like they're old now, they're hard to find. And they're a lot easier to restore. And there's a lot fewer parts to them. Um, and there's a lot more aftermarket port parts available. Bronco has a lot, but with a Jeep you can buy a whole tub. You don't have to put a body together, you just buy a whole tub. You know how much time that'll save you in a restoration? It's like a, it blows my mind actually. You know, uh, the scout, stay away. Like, if you're not a scout guy, stay away, man. 
these things, I remember a guy told me back in 1996, I hated my scout at nickel and dime me. I love my scout. I love my scout, but it nickels and dimes me. Like everything is custom on it. The aftermarket support, some great vendors out there, but they just not, you know, they don't have the tooling that the Ford guys in Taiwan have, right? So you can't buy every single body panel. You gotta scrounge for parts. You gotta trade and compromise and, and repair things that you would just throw away and buy new with a Bronco. So the Scouts are rough, man. I love it. I mean, I don't think there's a cooler looking truck in the world, but it is uh, it is way more expensive than restoring a Bronco. And it's got some quirks that Broncos don't have, so I can get into that some other time. I think that's all I got. If you guys have, if you guys want this discussion to go on, I'm willing to expound. I realize it's not positive. I'm expecting quite a few thumbs downs, but I'm not really worried about you a-holes who give me thumbs downs. I'm really worried about you guys who think you can do this, but don't know what you're getting into. I want you to know what you're getting into and then go do it, right? Because it's not... It's just really not fair to yourself, to your family, to your financial security to take on this endeavor lightheartedly. So go out there, make a ton of money, then buy a project and build it. Recommend doing it either before you have kids or when your kids are older. I spend more time in here than I should, to be honest. So speaking of, it's a school night. I'm going to go to bed. See you next time in Matt's Garage.